Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Everton show. Well, there's no bigger week in the football calendar, is there, than the week of a Merseyside derby. It's the 99th league meeting at Goodison Park and the 231st meeting of Everton and Liverpool in total. And we're due a win to tell us exactly how we'll get that win and to bring us up to date with his brand new role at the football club. I'm delighted to welcome Stephen Pienaar back to USM Finch Farm, a brand new Everton ambassador. A brand new, nice, thanks. Thanks, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, to be involved with the club again. Um, yeah, it's it's been two years now, so I'm coming back as a different person, <laughs> not <laughs> as a player. So you yeah. still look as if you could play, by the way. <laughs> but you loved it here, didn't you? Yeah, definitely. It was. Uh, I think uh, if I look back in my career, the eight years I spent at the club was uh, special for me, and this is where I actually, yeah, enjoy most of my football. If I look back in the last 17 years. You'll be working with our main partner, Sport Pacer, a lot out in South Africa. The passion for football in South Africa, the whole of Africa, is is enormous, isn't it? Yeah, the passion. Uh, I mean, football brings everyone together in, in, in Africa. And obviously in South Africa, you know, the, the, the Premier League is so massive. Um, a lot of uh, passionate supporters back home. And yeah, for me, it will be good uh, to get a, the, the, the name of the club out there and doing a lot of work and try and get more supporters to the club. Was it an easy decision for you to make, Stephen, when the club approached you? Uh, when I first uh, got a call from from um, my manager at the time, I was uh, I was sitting in the garage. He called me, he's like, are you Everton uh, wants you to do some ambassador work, are you up for it? I said, yeah, get me on a plane uh, as soon as possible. Yeah, it, you know, I was looking forward to it and for me as well, coming to the end of my career and you know, have a lot of time to think what you want to do and I think yeah, it's a perfect uh, match for me. It's a great win-win situation is it? because you're a big name in South Africa, we want to become a big name in South Africa so we can work together. Yeah, big name, I'm not so sure <laughs> if I am but nah, you know, it's, it's, it's good for, for me and also for the club. Uh, you know, like I said, back home there's a lot of uh, uh, passionate supporters uh, that support the Prem and uh, if I can recall, a lot of uh, people were following Everton, so it will be good to go back and yeah, mobilise them a bit, uh, get them to know more about the club mm -hmm. and get a history of the club out there for them as well. You're looking forward to going back to Goodison Park again? Yeah, uh, the last time I left, uh, I didn't uh, left quite sad because um, I didn't get opportunity to go out and I knew th what was happening at the time. And yeah, now it's I'm really looking forward to it because it's been two years, so and actually going back uh, for a derby game is, is, is even extra special. Goodison Park is a special place and adjacent to Goodison Park is St Luke's Church and that's where earlier this week our new stadium designer Dan Mice met up with a selection of Evertonians to talk about a project he's very excited about. You know it's it's really been incredible I think it, it exceeded our our hopes in just about every way. One there was a great attendance and you know it's a big commitment for people to come down in the middle of the day and and spend the time and not know exactly what they were going to be seeing. And so while we weren't able to show everything about where we are or, or where it's heading and exactly what it's going to look like, um, I thought we got great feedback and great reaction to um, explaining how we've taken the, the input in the survey so far and the key principles and really that is deriving the design. It's a, it's a unique thing to design a building that, that is so much about passion. And um, it's not just another project. And, and um, I often get very um, engaged in the history of a club that I'm working with or a team. But what's unique about this is that the, the history of Goodison is so, it's so deep and visceral that um, the first time I was at the building, I really felt that. And the idea of the, um, uh, the notion that this club really is uh, the representative of the community and the people, that's very infectious as an idea. And um, so it, it's really turned into something I've never experienced in my career, that it's, I, it's, it's like being the most um, committed fan and then having the responsibility and the opportunity to think about what is our new home. That's Dan Mice talking about the future, but let's speak a little bit more about Goodison Park. You must have some terrific memories of playing there. Yeah, you know, my, my first uh, home game uh, for the club was special. When I came on uh, for 15 minutes against Wigan, it was a special moment, you know. And yeah, the, the, the welcome I got from the supporters for me was really, you know, it touched me from, from the first day. And 
obviously uh, when I came back the second time, uh, my, my first home game against Chelsea, um, for me it was uh, also it was I was quite nervous that day. Because, yeah, I was because um, I didn't know how what kind of reception I'll get uh, coming back. And but yeah, as soon as I scored, everything was uh, yeah, I was forgiven actually. <laughs> <laughs> so it was back. actually a fabulous moment, wasn't it, to score an early goal against a team like Chelsea? Yeah, and at the time they were playing uh, quite quite mm. well. And for me, the, the, it was you know like I said, it was a special moment, and also to score in it. it in that game, uh, you know, got the supporters back uh, on my side again. And <laughs> it helped us <laughs> out, so, but it was a special moment. When you first came to the club on loan from Borussia Dortmund, it, 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 it got under your skin straight away, didn't it? You, you, you were affected by Everton Football Club quite quickly and wanted to make the move permanent. Yeah, as soon as I joined up with the, with the guys in, in, in LA, um, you know, the manager, the players, uh, the way they they received me. Uh, it you know it just felt like uh, I want to be here. I want to play for this club. And you know since since that day, it was just everything just it was like a match. Just tell us a little bit about your partnership with Leighton Baines because the Evertonians still speak about it now. Yeah, wherever I go, I think <laughs> everyone is asking about it. Yeah, it's, I think it's just the chemistry was uh, was just natural. Um, we both uh, hardworking players and. When we go out on the field, we, we want to leave everything there. And for us, uh, you know, the understanding, it just became, uh, yeah, more like when you when you get a girlfriend. <laughs> 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 At first, it was just, uh, the romance was just there, like on the field. And I enjoyed it, actually, you know, uh, playing with him. Um, did you have to work hard at it on the training ground, or did it just happen? No, it just happened. Uh, like I said, you know, it's, if, you, if you're an honest player, you go out, uh, and you want to get better every every day when you're out on the training field, and I think that's what what we were doing on the field when we're training. So and just in the games, it just looked easy. But yeah, like I said, it's a lot of hard work uh, on the pitch uh, during the week leading up to games. Mm. So yeah, and obviously having Baines uh, behind me, it's easy to play with him, you know. And sometimes uh, he's. His, uh, his humor was also getting to me. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, he's just it was, yeah. No, it was it was really good. Um, like I said, just the hard work on the on the training field that uh, paid off uh, when we played in matches. You played with some great players, some great guys. Phil Neville, Tim Howard, Yakubu, Joseph Yobo, Tim Cahill. Yeah, you know, great players. Uh, and when I came, they were all like really friendly to me. Um, got into the into the group quite quite well and quickly as well. And yeah, like you said, they helped me a lot to settle down as well. The, the big Yobo was uh, the one showing me around, mm. around town, where to go if I wanted to cut my hair. So, you, you know, all those things off the field, you know, it shows the players want you here, they want to help you settle in. And that helped me a lot. So, yeah, like with Phil coming in early in the morning, always being on my case. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing you know, as, a, as a team, it was, was quite good for me. Great players and great days. We're going to hear now from one of your midfield successes, Tom Davis. He's been telling us about his journey from the academy through to the first team. Walking out to Goodison, I think it's one of the best feelings that I get. Everton's been in my life since I can remember, really, since I was a kid. So, yeah, to actually be going out onto the pitch does mean, mean a lot to me, more than I can really put into words. And, and I do everything for this club. To come on and play my first game because like it was unbelievable. The fans were crazy. It's just surreal, really, because you you're not watching it. You're actually coming on to to be part of it. So for me, it's just I always say that in the moments I don't take them in enough. And I think if I was the 11 year old me again, I don't think he would have been able to get his head around it. It's happened, and I'm grateful for that. Yeah. I think when we come off, we were just again both buzzing, and then in the changes, just. Having a laugh and a joke. I think it was after we'd done an interview and I couldn't stop laughing at him. I'll go to you first, Callum, because you played the more minutes. How did you find that? Uh, I can't really describe it. Uh, I just thought we've, from where we've come to, come from to where we are now, it's just it's unbelievable. And I think that was when it was hitting me how well we'd actually done and, and where we were in our careers. This is me signing my first contract. And I don't think it really, really did hit me how, how big of a moment it was. Obviously, my mum and dad are buzzing. I'm buzzing myself. Yeah, looking back, that was a, it was a big stage in my career, yeah. This one's with my mum and dad, obviously, and I owe them everything, really. 
don't think I say enough to them, which maybe I should, but I think deep down they know how much they mean to me and them bringing me in from when I was a kid and bringing me up rides, my dad taking me to the park with my brother just to, to play footy really and yeah, I owe them everything. Yeah, well, the first pitch is obviously when I scored my first goal and it's like a level of happiness where you don't you don't stand around to take it in, you just go on with it and I think that's a perfect moment really. I remember just watching it, thinking it's going to go in. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just didn't know what to do after I scored. So the second one's running off, I'm running off. Uh, that smile, like if you know me, that's made me happiest really. And you can tell out in the pitches, just joy all over my face. Scoring in front of the Gladys Street and running off to celebrate with them, just... I don't know, I think that's everyone's dream, man, really. And it's come true for me, yeah. Well, it's great play by Davis. Wonderful skill. And on it goes for Barkley. Back for Davis. What a finish this could be. Davis, he's done it. That must be Tom Davis's goal. His first for the club. And what a wonder goal it was. Everton, three up against Manchester City. And that was absolutely sublime from Everton. I just love how, how much they, they care, really, with the fans. Obviously, they want you to do well, but just how much they care for the club, you can, you can tell what they do. And it's kind of like I'm one of them, and I, I, can, I can feel that when I'm playing, yeah. Goodison's... It's like home for me, really. I know it might sound a bit, but in terms of playing football, that's, that's our home, and that's... Where I've been to growing up to watch the games, where I'm playing at now is my home stadium. And, and yeah, it just, it just feels like it's the right place for me to, to be playing. And, and when I do go out there, I feel confident, I feel like I've got everyone behind me supporting me. And, and that helps me play to my best, really, yeah. Have you seen much of Tom Davis, Stephen? Been impressed with him? Yeah, I've been uh, extra, absolutely, since uh, he came through. I remember when my last, my last training session uh, at a club, uh, he, was, uh, he was training with us and I was quite impressed with him, the way he got about uh, his, his business on the field, you know, get stuck into mm. to the senior players for a boy at that age to do that, you know, he showed a lot of uh, uh, maturity at that stage and yeah, I'm really impressed the way things have been going for him. And, you can see also in his game when he came on the last game, he made a big impact uh, on, on the team as well. His energy, uh, his awareness, uh, you know, and he's, he's not scared to play. So he can only get better as well, can he? Definitely. I mean, he's, he's got a, the world at his feet. He just have to stay focused and yeah, keep going. Plenty more to come from Stephen Pienaar in part two of this week's Everton show, but we're going to take a short break now. Can we go up in that second part? Seamus Coleman looks ahead to the Merseyside derby. Welcome back to part two. I'm in the company of Stephen Pienaar here at USM Finch Farm. Let's speak a little bit about your early career, Steve. When you started off at Ajax and the famed Ajax Academy, that must have had a huge influence on your subsequent career. Yeah, in, in the early stages as a young player, I think that's the most important part, to how you develop. And I think at Ajax, uh, I got at, uh, that part in my, of my career qu quite quickly. And yeah, I worked under, under great managers at the club. Um, you get into the history of the club, uh, the way they want to play, and you develop as a young player. And for me, that was uh, the best opportunity to, to develop myself in Europe. Did you play alongside Zlatan Ibrahimovic at the time? Yeah, at the time, you, <laughs> yeah, I did. He like? uh, no, he was uh, the same, the same that he, the, the way he is now. He is exactly the same. He didn't change uh, much, much. Same. Um, just you know, his character was always, uh, you know, his. He, big personality mm. around all the players and yeah I got on quite well with him uh, we shared rooms uh, when we went away on training so camps. you knew he was going to be a superstar no I didn't <laughs> <laughs> to be fair <laughs> obviously you know when he when he joined the club uh, the first time in the first few months he was struggling 
uh, to adapt to the, to the Dutch league and obviously they paid a lot of money for him at the time and he was having difficulties with and you know all the players were always behind him supporting him mm -hmm. things will work out and yeah, you know after that uh, it got better and after he scored that unbelievable goal against Nagbreda I think that uh, set the, the stage for him and yeah from there he just became what he is mm, now. He pushed on as did you did you enjoy the Bundesliga? Yeah, I did. For me, it was a it was a massive uh, learning uh, experience. Uh, moving from the Dutch league, obviously, it's a it's a better competition uh, compared to the Dutch league. With no disrespect to the Dutch league, but uh, the, the standard is much higher. And for me, it was it was perfect uh, place where to develop as well to learn a new culture, football wise. And yeah, it was a, a springboard for me to come to the Premier League, and I think it prepared me physically and mentally for for the bigger stage. Was that always part of your long-term plan? As you say, the Bundesliga was a step up from the Dutch league, the Premier League's a step up again? Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember <coughs> when I was playing the Champions League against Arsenal and uh, we had some scouts coming over from City that wanted me to, to join City at the time when Stuart Pearce was the manager. And I had a meeting and I, I just felt it, was, it wasn't right at the time. And I said, I, I don't think I'm ready to, to jump. Uh, it's a big gap in between. Mm. And, when Dortmund came, uh, I took that opportunity because I knew for myself personally that's how I want to want to move up, uh, go step by step, and and it worked out quite well for me. And then David Moyes enticed you to Everton. Yeah, I think he, he was doubting at the time. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, to be fair, the, the, the gaffer he gave me the opportunity to come over and make me feel part of the special club, you know, from day one. And like he always said to me, this is a family club. Uh, You'll enjoy your time here, and uh, and actually, I did. And you know, f thanks to him, he brought me to the club. I think three times. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I'm happy, and yeah, I enjoyed my time under him as well. How important was it for you personally to end your playing career in South Africa? Yeah, you know, I always uh, for me that was my dream. I started there uh, with Ajax Cape Town, um, and I told myself I'll retire when I'm 30 years old. I think. Uh, I see that I went past <laughs> 30, so yeah, and I always said uh, if I ever want to retire, I want to go back home. Uh, if not, if it's not I escaped, then maybe a team, but as long as it's, it's in South Africa. And I think, yeah, my dream came true. I started it and uh, I ended it there, but didn't work out the way I wanted it. Uh, would have liked to walk away with a league title, but um, yeah, unfortunately I didn't. But uh, I'm happy the way it, it, it panned out. It's, what I planned and it, you know it came everything worked out for me. How much did you enjoy playing in the Merseyside derbies? Yeah it was always one of those games and uh, you know where you go out uh, it's tough games and you get hyped uh, the hype builds up two weeks before even so I actually enjoyed it going out you know and just to represent the club and you know you want to go out and win yeah, sometimes we didn't but it's one of those games you don't need uh, motivation, so you, you know the game on its own is there. You just have to go out and play and make sure you roll up your sleeves, and that's what we did. You just got to get out there and get used to the atmosphere as quickly as possible. The old players used to say you didn't even need a ball for the first 10 minutes. Yeah, I remember the one at Anfield. Uh, like <laughs> when the game started, I think Carragher went the uh, smash right mm. through me, and I was like, Phew. I was a bit confused after <laughs> for a few seconds, and uh, after the game, the guy said there was. When I when I looked it back, when I watched it back, uh, the guy said, "Oh, welcome to the derby." And, <laughs> and then after that, uh, I think I got sent all that game. <laughs> so, yeah, but you know, it's, it's you just need to, like I said, the first the first tackle, whatever you your first challenge, make sure you win it, and you know that sets the tone for the game. Plenty of big name players will be needed on the day, none more so than Jordan Pickford, who of course you played with at Sunderland. Are you, are you glad to see him here? Yeah, you know, before he, he signed, uh, when I was up, uh, up north, I said to him, if ever you want to move to a, to, a, to a good club, uh, I think Everton will fit you. And I think he took my advice. And <laughs> I'm happy he joined the club. He's, uh, he's a great talent. You could see even the games, he's, he's, he's a big part of the team. And you know he's been making unbelievable saves uh, during the season. Even his personality, the way he wants to learn every day, and I think you know this is a great club to be at. Well, the last time Everton beat Liverpool was back in October 2010. It was a first Merseyside derby appearance for Seamus Coleman, and he's certainly looking forward to this one.
Yeah, you do. You definitely sense it's a different game, and you know some some people might be nervous, some people might enjoy it. Depends on the character, but um, you know after ten months out, I'm, I can't wait for that for that game on Saturday. And you know going into every game, I fully believe we can win, and it's the same on Saturday. And you know if we can get the crowd behind us quite early, I think you know we can we can definitely give it a go. It must be a good challenge to test yourself against players like that. Definitely, you want to play against the best te the best teams and the best players all the time, and they've definitely got some of the best players at the moment. And you know it's up to us to, to perform as best we can and, and try and get uh, importantly ourselves a result, and you know not come away from another derby disappointed and you know not having won it. And for our fans as well, we need to we need to step up to the, up to the plate and and be counted. And you know that has to start on Saturday. The Merseyside derby, there was one just after you got injured and, and Jurgen Klopp played tribute to in the programme saying that there's a lot to admire about you as a player even though he doesn't really know you. Is there a lot to be said about him as a manager as well, an opposition manager coming out and saying something like that against you know an opposition team? Yeah, look, um, I was at home at the time and uh, I think I got I seen the pictures come through of, of the manager's notes and I think uh, Jordan Henderson as well. So, you know, to put the, you know, the... The rivalry aside for that for that time being was great for me to hear, and it was something you know that I really did appreciate at the time, and uh, something that I'd I'd like to thank both of them for. But um, obviously on Saturday, he please God he doesn't like me as much. But um, no, it's something that I, I did appreciate at the time, and you know it was a good gesture. It's a massive game as well in terms of points for you guys, because uh, does it feel like that chance of European football is perhaps drifting away a little? I think. Uh, Obviously, with Leicester winning and Burnley winning at the weekend and us losing it, it, it ma it's making it more difficult. But you know, I've looked at the fixtures we have coming up, and I think we can aim to get a lot of winnable games out of that. And you know, in the Premier League, as everyone knows, there's no easy games. But I want to finish as high up as we can. And you know, me personally, I'm still clinging on to the hope of of getting seventh, depending on how how we can finish the season. The manager has said he's set a 50-point target for for you for the remaining games. Would that be a decent tally given the way that things have gone this season? I suppose what you say there is the way things have gone this season. You would have to possibly say yeah, but for Everton Football Club and and, and what we want, you know, at the start of the season, it's not what we would have wanted. But unfortunately, the way the season has went, you know, it probably will be okay. But as I said, I want to win as many games as possible and see where that takes us between now and the end of the season. So what does the future hold now for Stephen Pienaar? Is, is coaching a possibility? Uh, no, definitely not. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I see that a lot of decisive. I see a lot of uh, my former teammates getting old too quick, and uh, yeah, you know, football uh, coaching is a lot of stress, and you have to be up for it. And at the moment, I don't think I'm up for it. So I, I want to go into media stuff, uh, and also yeah, just go out there and encourage young kids, you know, that's what I want to do. And you're still in touch with your old friend Yakubu? Yeah, I am actually with, with a big yak. Uh, I speak to him uh, on a regular basis, so uh, yeah, he's also working out in the gym <laughs> to <laughs> keep it. <laughs> How pleased are you to see the likes of Umar Nias and Idrissa Gay, two African players, really flourishing at Evan? Yeah, I think uh, obviously Joseph uh, was here long at the club. I think he's, if not the longest African mm -hmm. serving player at the club. And for him, you know, he, he left something special at the club uh, for for us, for the other African players to follow. And you know, and I think I'm I'm really happy that we have that connection with the club, with African players. And you know, it's it's great for the club and also uh, yeah, great for the continent of Africa. Stephen, it's been a pleasure to be in your company. Welcome back again to Everton Football Club. Yet another comeback <laughs> for Stephen Pienaar. Good luck in your new role. And that's just about it. For this week's Everton show, just time for me to remind you that midnight on Friday is the deadline for existing season ticket holders to renew their normal seat. Visit EvertonFC.com for more details. We haven't beaten Liverpool in the last 16 games. Will this weekend be the one? Let's hope so. Do join us again in seven days' time for another Everton show. You've been watching The Everton Show on YouTube. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm sure you have. Don't forget to subscribe and that way you can catch every single future episode.